Hello, welcome to this video where we're looking at the fundamental theorem of line integrals. And this will be our first example of a, a three-dimensional um, vector field line integral question. We're asked to, uh, if it exists, uh, find who f is the gradient of. That would be called a potential function, and we call it phi. So if possible, if there is such a phi, find the phi. And the way you can check to see if it is possible is by checking the partials. Uh, P is already an X partial. Q is already a Y partial, if, it, if it's true. And um, R would already be a Z partial. So we're looking for the mixed partials, the partials after that. So we're looking at first for PY and QX, like in 2D. But then there are also two more that we have to do involving R. RY is QZ, RX is PZ. So first up, QX is uh, 4XY. PY, also 4XY. There are no Ys in the R function. RY is 0. There are no Zs in the Q function. QZ is 0. Now RX is 6XZ. And pz is also 6xz so yes it's true there is a gradient uh, f is the gradient of some vector field now we have uh, f is the gradient of some scalar function we have to find out who it is the gradient of let's go find phi and what's going to be on display here is called the sifting method where you integrate p with respect to x giving us here x squared y squared plus 3x squared over 2z squared. Now, when you go to add something, before we just say, oh, some function of y. But now there's another variable, z, as well. The function of y and z is constant with respect to x. You take this guy's x partial, that part will zero out. You'll get exactly p. So we add this g of y, z, the other variables. Then you integrate q with respect to y. You'll get x squared, y squared but then you'll get y squared. And then potentially some function who could have some x's and z's in it because when you take its y partial, that part doesn't contribute. I am color coding these guys, okay? And um, in the end, although they might be repeated, I'll only use uh, each term once. Last step, integrate r with respect to z. So um, we'll get three halves x squared z squared minus z squared, plus potentially some function who could have some x's and y's in it. The sifting method says, basically, anyone who's there, take them. So if there's a repeat it, you only take it once. So x squared y squared is there twice. So what? Just take it. It's in there. Three halves of x squared z squared is there twice. So what? Just take it. It's in there. Y squared it's in there. Z squared, uh, negative z squared, it's in there. And then you can put the plus C. And then you can work out exactly what G of Y, Z was, what G, H of X, Z was. You can work that out. But it's called the sifting method. Take everyone who shows up, the union of all these terms, basically. If they show up twice, just take it once. And there you have your phi. Okay. Please endure this long, drawn-out argument of of um, if you don't like the sifting method, if you want to see why the sifting method works for this particular example, please endure this long drawn out argument that's going to be on the next two slides. I apologize in advance. If you don't want to watch it, please just end the video right now. You've done great. You have the sifting method. The sifting method works. It's great. But a 3D argument about what G of Y, Z and H of X, Z could be and K of X, Y, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> But I want you to see it so you can appreciate this shortcut. What we see here is the called the sifting method. I, I made that up. I know. You're sifting. Okay. Just taking it and shaking it up and seeing who falls through. All right. So here we go with the long drawn out argument. It's going to have all this to begin with. And then we're going to set these guys equal to each other and make arguments based on the G's and the H's and the K's. It's a mess. Turn the video off. <laughs> all right. So we have all that again. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now. We're going to set these equal to each other. The phi from line from the P and the phi from the Q, they're equal to each other. 
Okay. Set them equal. Cancel out any terms that are alike. And we have a statement we have to make an argument about. It's really ridiculous. So the g of y z function, what does that even look like? What does that break down to be? Well, it could be only z's. It could be only y's. It could be y and z's together. Or it could be a constant. Have all four possibilities. Uh, the h of x z. It could be h of x z. Uh, it could be a, a x only. It could be a y only. I'm sorry, z only. Or it could be another constant. Okay, now we need to argue about oh, all this stuff isn't really there. How could that possibly be? Um, this function of y and z, there are no y's on the right-hand side. So the function of y and z must be 0. The function of uh, h2 of x, there are no x terms only on the left-hand side. So that, that guy's got to be a 0. Okay. And then we can equate terms and we see that, well, the function of x and z together has to be 3 halves of x squared z squared. The function of g of 2 of y has to be the y squared. We don't know what g of 3 of z is and h of 3 of z is, but, but they have to be equal to each other. And then the constants must be equal to each other. All right, so with that said, then we know exactly what g of z looks like. Okay, it is y squared plus some function of z only plus a constant. We know exactly what h of xz is. It's the 3 halves x squared z squared plus g3 of z, some function that only has z's in it, plus a constant. What's in blue there, okay, the, uh, the, the one part of the blue cancels, the other part is already equal to the uh, y squared. So the two parts, in, there's three, three, colored, uh, three, three things in blue here. And uh, one of them goes away and the other two are still there. Uh, one of them is replaced with y squared and the other one is replaced with just a generic symbol stays there as g3 of z. Um, in red here, the, um, the, 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 red, the three terms in red will have the h2 of x is equal to 0. That term's gone. The, x, the h1 of xz is equal to um, the 3 halves of x squared z squared. And then the, uh, you can call the h3 of z, just rewrite it as g3 of z. You're doing great. Whew. Okay, so we have phi. Now, if we could just figure out what g3 of z is, we'll be done. Okay. All right, great. Let's do some rearranging here. Uh, there we go. So the way it's set up here, the... Uh, g of yz is that part there and the h of xz is that part there okay all right great and this is supposed to be equal to um, phi for integrating the the r as well so here it's the uh what we got from integrating r with respect to z okay now these two should be equal to each other from line one well line one and two match um from line one we're setting equal to line three we do the arguing again Cancel out, and we do the arguing again. We already have broken down the left-hand side. Let's break down the right-hand side. This k of x, y could be three different guys plus a constant. And now we do our arguing. There's no x term only on the left-hand side, so that k2 is 0. The function of x and y, k1, that's got to be x squared, y squared. The function of um, k3 of y, that's got to be y squared. The function g3 of z, that's got to be negative z squared. And the constants have to be equal. So you know exactly what k is. You know exactly what phi is. Wow, that was too much. Hopefully you didn't watch that. But if you did and you endured that, never do it this way. Use the shortcut, the sifting method. All right, great. Uh, one more thing I want to add. Um, if ever you are integrating, uh, a line in a row that is um, closed and it's independent of path, then the integral was automatically zero. Just think of how the fundamental theorem of line integrals work. You're supposed to take the starting point, you plug it into phi, take the ending point, 
plug it into phi. But if your starting point and your ending point is the same, you know, if you're closed, then it'll be zeroed out. If, if uh, x1, y1 is the same as x0, y0, then it's going to zero out. Okay. All right, great. So um, that, that ends the video. Um, we're done as far as the fundamental theorem of line angles series of videos goes. Um, my name is Nikai Rimmer. Navigating you through this journey of multivariable calculus. Um, please comment down below, like, and subscribe. Uh, find my way to my calccoach.com webpage for extra resources. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.